Good morning, beekeepers. Here we are in uh, the beginning of October, making final preparations for wintering our bees. I'm in the uh, interior of British Columbia, Canada. We see uh, several weeks of up to minus 40. So <clears throat> we do uh, a lot of preparation to overwinter our bees. So I'm a little laid up today. Uh, this will just be for demonstration purposes only. <clears throat> what I do is um, the, the things that kill beehives are mites, moisture, and starvation. I am OCD on mite control. <clears throat> All of my hives this morning were less than 1% mites uh, after an alcohol wash. So that only leaves uh, feed and moisture. What I do and, and what I'd like to pass along is throughout the summer, starting in about June, I will both balance all my beehives, i.e. I'll pull out resources from uh, a strong uh, beehive and I'll put it into a beehive that is uh, not as strong. I do a lot of splits and so I'm always shuffling resources around. <clears throat> and at the same time when the honey flow starts, I go down into the uh, brood box and I'll pull out two, three, four frames of capped honey, if available, on the big powerful boxes. And I will keep those for winter preparation. This also allows the queen added room to lay more brood, and therefore the hive will expand more rapidly. And uh, yes, I always leave them enough uh, pollen and honey for them to sustain the hive that they have, but I'll, uh, I'll get into that in just a little while. So what... Uh, you should be looking at today and here and of course a lot of these factors that I'm going to share with you today are more appropriate to our weather uh, in British Columbia like I mentioned minus 40. <clears throat> so here we go let's get started. First thing I do is I get a <clears throat> inexpensive digital scale and I'll hook it to the front of the, <clears throat> of the beehive and I'll get what's called a total hive weight. So if I hook it on the front deck of the beehive and I pull and I lift the, the uh, beehive off the ground, it doesn't have to be much. Let's say that you're gonna get a reading of 60 pounds. Well, that's half the beehive. So the other half will be 60. So that'll give you a total hive weight of 120 pounds. That is my target here in British Columbia, 120 pounds of total hive weight. What happens if you don't have that? I will take the honey from the brood chamber that I stored this last summer, and I will pull empty frames, and I'll replace it with those frames of honey until I get that 110, 120 pounds of total hive weight. Some of the things I'll discuss today also are for people that haven't done that preparation, and that is feeding. <clears throat> I feed a two-to-one SERP. I cut uh, a couple of holes in the inner cover. I'll take uh, quart jars, and I'll use a three-quarter inch nail, and I'll punch in 50 holes. Now, the idea is to feed them hard, feed them fast, and feed them until they don't take it anymore. If you, if you trickle the feed, the syrup in, they will consume it and not store it. So if you feed it an excess fast, they will store that as honey. So just a, by the way, in my lids for the rest of the year, I have uh, different 
uh, inserts <clears throat> that I can use for temperature control. I can put one in there or I can simply plug off the hole completely. <clears throat> and that's how I design my inner covers. There's my jar of two to one syrup. I don't need to feed syrup in the fall at all because my total hive weight is nearing 120 pounds. So I don't feed. A lot of people do. A lot of people are required. So then we're going to discuss <clears throat> candy boards. Now, I will provide a recipe for my candy boards. Candy boards serve two functions. They provide added feed and moisture control. So here's my <clears throat> candy board box. If I can just kind of zoom in. <clears throat> what I do is I leave the edges, the bottom edges, so that the girls can propolize and seal their hives. No, I don't wrap. I, I, uh, no point in wrapping with uh, roofing paper, tar paper, whatever. The bees will do a better job of it than you can possibly imagine. I use half inch uh, hardware cloth for my candy box. And just as important, I have a three quarter inch hole in the front for ventilation. And uh, there you go, that's the candy box. <clears throat> So that's going to provide extra feed and moisture control. Now, moisture control, everyone has to deal with. Uh, this is my uh, pillow box. I've cut three quarter inch vents in the side. I've covered the vents over with mesh so that mice don't get in. But on this box, I use quarter inch hardware cloth and again leave the edges so that the girls can propolize this so there's uh, two holes on either side a hole at the back and a hole at the front <clears throat> what I do is I use wood stove pellets now the reason I do that is that wood stove pellets expand and hold four times their own weight and moisture, whereas shavings just get soggy and wet. So these actually expand. And so what you'll see in my pillow box is I lay in a layer of uh, burlap. You could use cheesecloth, whatever. I go to the farm store and they've got lots of potato sacks and whatever. And so this is just for demonstration. I've just laid the burlap in there so you can see how I do it. And then <clears throat> as far as laying in the wood pellets, only go a quarter deep because they will expand four times their size. And by the spring, it will be flush. It will be, th this box will be packed with wood shavings and nice and soggy and wet. Okay, so insulation. I mentioned I do not wrap. No, I do not wrap. Minus 40. <clears throat> what I do is I use three quarter inch styrofoam and I cut it to fit the inside of my top cover. This one's been well loved. I place it shiny side down. Now, the reason I put it shiny side down is that the moisture, and of course, <clears throat> again, this is only for demonstration purposes. I use three mediums. Three mediums are exactly the same size, same volume as two deeps. So again, demonstration purposes only. I take the inner cover off completely. I'll put my candy board next. So the bees will be able to come up through the half inch hardware cloth into the candy board for resources. 
And it's important that it's close because there's beehives that can start literally starve to death with food close by but not close enough. Now to deal with the moisture control, <clears throat> I'll take my pillow box So there's my hive, my candy board, my pillow box, and just the way that is, I'll now take my top lid voila. Any questions, feel free to ask. You can uh, message me directly on Facebook. Uh, I'll leave a link to my YouTube channel. I have a no number of uh, videos there to share. But hopefully this will answer some of the questions that you might have. All right. Happy beekeeping.